Welcome to Mixing It Up, 3D Reconstructions, Virtual Reality, and Video Games. In this series of lectures, we'll be covering dioramas and models, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, photogrammetry, and structure for motion, and then with video games. In this, I hope that you will understand there is a range of representation that you can experiment with, both analog and digital. First, we'll discuss analog or real 3D models as they have a long and ongoing history in archaeology. In the reading this week, Sarah Perry ties visualization to archaeological theory. Paying attention to visual outputs can presage cognitive and methodological shifts within the discipline. She argues this point through the models made by UCL Institution of Archaeology's Repair Laboratory, which was a conservation, artifact restoration, model production, and teaching unit. She argues that visualizations are a critical bridge between academics and non-academic audiences. This was a lucrative enterprise, and the founder, Frederick Zuner, insisted on an inseparable link between theory and its visible physical exhibition. A variety of models were produced, both archaeological and paleontological. He invited peer review of these models, the repair laboratory eventually became the conservation lab. This is Marjorie Maitland Howard, an artist and illustrator who worked at the Institute from 1948 to 1960. She was responsible for making models and illustrations of prehistoric animals for Zuner. The models were fondly remembered by Institute alumni who used them as key cognitive aids. Scientifically accurate scale models of extinct Pleistocene mammals and the preparation of dioramas illustrating the lands in which Paleolithic man encountered these beasts. These models were in demand and created money for the Institute. Remember, there were a limited amount of visual aids to learn about prehistory at the time. Sarah Perry emphasizes that the creators of these models subjected them to visual scrutiny and were rigorous results of scientific activity. But these models have been sidelined. What was once a lucrative enterprise for UCL has now become invisible and taken for granted. Think about the last model you have seen. What did it depict? Were there people in it? Was it of a house, a battlefield, an extinct animal? These models are making visual arguments, and their legacy lives on. Probably the best example of this are models of Neanderthals in museums. These models have changed over time, and photographs of them are often used to illustrate all manners of news stories. How has this visual legacy impacted our understanding of Neanderthals in the past? Additionally, people who make 3D models of buildings often use past illustrations and physical reconstructions to model their own visualizations. This is actually how we teach it in many of our courses. But what are the effects of this in trying to come up with different interpretations, non-standard interpretations? Right, so let's move to virtual, augmented, and mixed reality. Virtual reality was coined by Geron Lanier in 1979 with working prototypes 10 years later. It was popularized by cyberpunk novels and science fiction, and there were high hopes at first, but these were limited by technology. Lawnmower Man was probably the first mainstream exposure most audiences had to the concept of virtual reality, an open world where your mind is your only limitation. Our most recent mainstream iteration of this is Ready Player One, where the main character is able to escape his squalid existence in a glossy, infinite world. Unfortunately, the reality in early virtual reality was incredibly clunky and predictably ridiculous. VR and haptics still have a long way to go. On the left, you see a convenience store stockist. It's not really the idea of the unlimited horizons that most people think of when they think of, say, virtual reality or telepresence. And I say this as a former convenience store stockist. In the next lecture, we'll get more specifically into virtual reality and archaeology.